afternoon, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to Patriot Gardens. Uh, we're going to talk about growing citrus fruit in containers today. I'm Chris Postlewaite, so I'll be talking to you guys a little bit about that. A um, couple things I want to start out with before we get into the presentation here. If you are joining and you did not pre-sign up, just go ahead and uh, give us uh, your email in the comments section, and we'll be sure to email you this presentation so you've got it. Uh, for the ones that did pre-register, you should have already had this emailed to you, so I'll give you guys a couple seconds to pull that up just in case you forgot it. But a uh, couple things I want to talk to you about citrus. It's a really big popular thing here in the West Virginia or northern states, basically because, you know, we can't grow citrus trees. This is, you know, a Texas, South Texas, South Florida, Southern California, or, you know, even in other countries, tropical areas. But we can grow citrus uh, quite well in West Virginia in containers. Uh, personally, myself, um, this is my favorite plant hobby out of everything that I deal with. Um, and I know last week I talked to you guys about worms, and I really like dealing with worms too, but citrus trees are kindly my bread and butter. It's just a hobby that I picked up years ago in plants and one that I've kindly stuck with. I grow several varieties at my house. Um, I brought one in here today that I'll show you guys, my littlest one. Uh, my trees are quite large and in charge now and very difficult to move in vehicles, especially when the weather is cold like it is here today. I think we're at a nice 44 degrees and spitting some snow outside. So um, without further ado, we'll, we'll get into the presentation here. If you have any questions about anything that I'm talking about, feel free to comment in the comment section. Again, I've got uh, my coworker here, Brad, running the camera and uh, answering some of the questions or he will ask me those questions as they pop up. Okay, guys, well, let's get started. So the best citrus fruit to grow in containers. Lemons by far are probably one of the easiest to grow in a container along with sweet limes. So you've got limes and lemons, which are very close to each other. <clears throat> a little bit different. I guess most of us know that one's green, one's yellow, but that's not always the truth. Uh, mandarins and oranges, and last but not least, kumquats. So all of these do quite well in containers here in West Virginia. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these and we'll talk about them. And then at the end, we'll have some overall citrus care, uh, regardless of which one you're growing that you kindly have got to meet some requirements for, for growing citrus. Uh, lemons by far are the easiest to grow in containers. Um, lemons and limes are really, really close. I, I would probably say that lemons and limes are probably the easiest, but a lot of people do seem to want to grow lemons more than limes just for culinary purposes. But if you're a person who likes limes, they're very easy to grow too. We'll talk about them in a minute. But the lemons are, are quite uh, easy to grow in containers and also are kindly bred for that now. The Improved Meyer lemon is one of the best varieties to grow. Um, you guys have probably seen the Improved Meyer. It's one of the most popular ones that we, we see in the store. But I will tell you, out of all the lemons, the Meyer lemon is probably the most fussiest to grow in a pot. Um, it will grow very well in a pot as long as you meet its, uh, its re growing requirements. But out of other lemons that I have grown, other varieties uh, like the uh, Ponderosa lemon is, is, is by far way easier to grow, in my opinion, in a pot than, than the Meyer lemon. But the Meyer lemon is the uh, top, the cream of the crop, if you will, of the lemons. It's the most flavorful. So most of our chefs and culinary people really want the Meyer lemons over some of the other lemon varieties just because it's more aromatic. But um, if, uh, if you do decide to pick a, a lemon to grow and it's your first one, I'm not gonna tell you not to grow the Meyer, but I would probably recommend that you grow a different lemon other than the Meyer for your first one out the door. Now, if you've been growing for a while, then you can probably know what your Meyer lemon likes. Um, Sun Gold and Pink variegated varieties also do well in containers. Sun Gold is probably a, the one that I would recommend the beginner to start growing if you wanted to grow a lime. Um, I was telling you guys earlier that some lemons are yellow and some and the limes are green, but not always. Well, in this case, there is a pink variegated lemon that you can buy. The rind actually does turn to a very pink color before it goes to a pale yellow color. The flesh inside is pink too, so there is such thing as a pink lemonade. I know a lot of people think that, that was something that Kool-Aid may have made up years ago, but um, there is a pink uh, lemon that you can buy. 
These trees will top out at five to six feet tall. That's if you let them go full size. Now you can keep them easily at three feet tall, which is the recommendation for most people in their house and they will do just fine. But if you wanna grow a larger tree, you can let them get to about my height. I'm six foot nine. So they will pop out somewhere right about my height. But just remember you have to provide them a big enough pot to grow in that, that get that size. And also you gotta move that pot around your property. So just keep that in mind if you let them go big. Um, does it like to be below 30 degrees? No lemons like to be below 30 degrees. Now we know freezing's at 32. Yes, lemons and, and uh, limes can take uh, colder temperatures and some of their other citrus friends. Uh, if you think about Florida, a lot of times when they have the late snaps, you hear it on the national news about the citrus growers down there are worried that the frost is gonna come in and get their trees. Uh, that's more on oranges than it is on the limes and the lemons. They can take a little bit colder. Uh, so if you do have your tree and let's say the power goes out or if you're moving it in and out of the house this time of the year where it's warm in the day and cold at night and you get down in the 40s or even the 30s, don't freak out too much. They can take a little bit of, of cold temperatures. I wouldn't leave them below, uh, if they go below 30, they're going to probably die. You're going to get injury. 29, 28 degrees, you're going to start to get injury on the tips and some leaf issues. But they can go below freezing for probably about two to three hours without much harm. Um, does not like cold wind or drafts, which is kind of funny if you think about it, but for some reason, natural breezes outside don't bother citrus, but as soon as you bring them in your house and you put them near the front door where you're constantly going in and out the door, the kids are running in and out the door, you're letting the dog out, that cold bit of air that's getting blowing through your door, if your citrus tree is near that cold blast, that will actually cause some problems and it'll start to drop a few leaves. And uh, that's what a lot of people have that problem. We'll talk about leaf drop here in a little bit on all citrus varieties, but make sure that wherever you have any citrus in your house, that it's someplace where it's not going to get a draft from the door or the floor registers right below it to where warm or cold air is gonna blow out of the register. I always tell everybody if you have your plants near a floor register, maybe buy the little clear tops that you can put on your floor registers that directs the air to blow across the floor instead of straight up underneath the canopy of the trees. You can pick one of those little things up, I think, at Lowe's or Home Depot. Mandarin oranges, these are extremely easy to grow in containers too. These are probably right there with lemons and limes. Uh, most of us that, that are buying citrus from the stores probably are buying some type of mandarin. The cuties that the kids love to eat, those are in the mandarin family. So mandarins also include clementines and tangerines. All three are close cousins, just with different tartness. So really the only difference between clementines and the cuties is going to be the size of the actual fruit and how sweet or how tart the fruit is. And there is buku varieties out there now that all claim to be super sweet or super tart. And that all depends on where you're at and a bunch in the middle. Most of them are usually seedless. As you guys know, if you've eaten any of the uh, cuties or bought any tangerines from the store, most of the time they're seedless. You'll find a seed maybe in, in, in a bag of them every once in a great while. Tangerines are tart with very little sweetness. So if you are a person who likes tart citrus, then the tangerine's more, more of your um, style. Clementines and mandarins tend to be a little bit sweeter than the uh, tangerine. But uh, I like them all either way, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, mandarins also hate cold drafts, so that's going to be a, a common theme throughout any citrus you grow. Do not put them near any place where they're going to get a constant cold draft from a front door, back door, or leaky window, or something like that. Uh, mandarins are very juicy compared to other citrus fruit, which is why they're dominating the market now. You go in the grocery store, you'll see a lot more tangerines, mandarins, and cuties over oranges and grapefruits uh, than what you would 20 years ago. That's because of improved varieties. Uh, fun fact, most of those mandarins and clementines you're buying in the grocery store are growing in a greenhouse. These trees are growing in containers or on hydroponic systems in greenhouse. So for anybody who says that you can't grow the mandarin in your house, it's not true. Most of the ones you're getting from the store are coming from a greenhouse setting. So these trees have been bred to grow small in containers and load up with lots of fruit. Um, they're very juicy, like I was saying, compared to the other ones. So I think that's why a lot of the kids and a lot of people have kindly moved over to the smaller tangerines in that market. Second best citrus to grow in containers behind the lemons and the limes. Mature height on these guys is going to be three to six feet. So these are a little bit smaller than lemons and limes would be. You can easily keep one in a pot in your house, maintain it at a height of three feet, and have loads of, of mandarin oranges coming on throughout the year. Uh, most of the mandarins will fruit from October to April. So what we're talking about here is fruit, depending on the variety that you get, 
Some are going to be ready in October, some may as long as April before they come in. So if you grow three or four different mandarin varieties, you can pretty much have mandarins almost all year round. Um, but they do have a season, but you will start to see these guys grow vigorously in the summer and they'll start blooming and set in bloom in August and you'll start to see your fruits uh, starting to grow and come on in October. Uh, Gold Nugget is probably one of the best ones that you could grow here in West Virginia for a container or W. Murcott. Those are probably the two best varieties and I've got some resources on where you can source these trees at too here in a little bit. Kumquats. Now, I have not personally eaten a kumquat. I know Brad back here running the camera told me that he tried one a few years back and it was one of the nastiest things he's ever eaten. I have seen these in the store, but I have never eaten one or, or ever been introduced to one. So I guess next time I see one, I'm gonna have to buy one, Brad, and see what it's all about. There's some debate on kumquats in the uh, world of plants. Are they a citrus tree or not? Half of the scientists say they're not, and the other half say they are. So there's still some debate there on the evolutionary chain of where these trees originated from. They're very small and oval shaped, if you've ever seen them. They have fuzzy skin, they're real paper thin. A lot of people like these because they don't have to peel them like they do other citrus fruits. You can pretty much use the skins right on. Uh, I usually have seen them when I have heard people use kumquats. It's usually in some type of holiday cooking or some type of marmalade or jelly that somebody's making. These guys are very hardy compared to other citrus though. These guys can go down to 10 degrees. So if you like kumquats and you live in West Virginia, this may be the one for you to grow because this guy could set outside a long time. I mean, it's not often here in town in the Valley, Huntington, Charleston area that we're below 10 degrees. We get a few of those days, sure. But think about how many days are below 10 degrees in West Virginia compared to days that it's above 10 degrees. So really these trees could set outside almost all year round except for maybe in January and some of uh, February. Um, Minowa and Fukushu are the two uh, best that I have been told that grow the best in pots of pot worthy varieties to grow. Once again, I'm not going to claim that I know much about the uh, kumquats because I, I, I do not. But um, if anybody out there is a kumquat lover or grower, I would love to hear anything that you have to say about that tidbits or anything that uh, you may or may not like, just comment, let me know. Um, or shoot me an email address and we can have a conversation because I'm always interested to hear more about plants. Sweet limes, guys. So when I talk about sweet limes, I'm talking about limes. We just call them sweet limes because they are a little bit sweeter than a lemon. And at one point in time uh, in history, lemons and limes were kindly thought to be the same thing. One was just yellow, just like you have green apples and yellow apples. But genetically speaking, they are a little bit different, but not much. Uh, the two most common varieties grown in containers are key limes and the Persian limes. Now, key limes are fantastic, uh, but you know, they're really, really bitter and tart to the point that they almost burn your mouth, the juice does, for most people. So, you know, you don't see a lot of key lime juice and things like that being consumed in drinks. However, we all know about key lime pie and some uh, seafood dishes and things like that. So, if you're big on the key lime pies or you're big on doing a lot of seafood and you're using a lot of key limes, um, they are easy, easy to grow in a pot and they do not get very big. These trees will get about 18 inches to 20 inches tall in a six inch pot and load up with key limes until they're just covered in key limes. I mean, you'll have more than you probably would ever use if you're giving them away. So if you do want to get into key limes, just buy one, don't buy two or more. The Persian lime, if you're looking at the presentation that we sent you, the slide, there's a picture right here. This is a Persian lime in the picture. This is actually a Persian lime of mine. Uh, this was on my deck about two and a half years ago. I took this picture. That tree now is three times that size. Um, as you look in the picture, you'll see a lot of lemons hanging out on the edges. There's green lemons. These lemons are huge. These, these lemons are the size of tennis balls, guys. These are not the Kroger Walmart lemons that we're buying that are tiny, and, or limes, I'm sorry, I said lemons. Limes that we buy that are super little. These guys get big and plump. Um, this particular Persian lime right here will set limes year round. Uh, this tree does not stop. As long as you meet its growing requirement, it is just going to keep loading up and keep loading up. So me and my wife personally really like this tree a lot because we do a lot of Mexican, it requires a lot of limes. So if you're cooking a lot, the Persian lime's great. If you're a cocktail fan, you like to uh, mix drinks, the Persian lime is known as the golden standard for uh, cocktails and drink mixes. It's got the best lime flavor out of all the other limes that are out there like over the kefir and those types of, of, of limes. Um, 
But I will tell you guys, as long as you keep this thing pruned, I prune this my, my line heavily. Like it gets pruned at least once a month because it grows just so vigorously. The more I prune it, it seems like all the new growth that comes off after I prune, that's what's going to have the buds on it. And that's what's going to set more fruit. So the more I prune, the more fruit I end up with. To the point that sometimes I even cut fruit off. I'll, I'll sacrifice some fruit for the shape of my tree. Um, Persian lime tree only grows to four feet tall. So these guys are excellent. Mine is probably right at four foot, but it's about three foot wide. It's real bushy. I let mine bush out so I get more fruit production. They are seedless, very, very juicy, which is why the bartenders like them or why the chefs like them. Very thin skinned and easy to peel. That is true. These guys uh, do not have a tough rind on them like other lemons or, lime, uh, or, or limes do. Um, they're almost as easy to peel as some of the clementines or tangerines. You can just kind of get your thumb right in there on the blossom tip and reach up underneath it and it just peels right off. They hold on the trees for weeks after fully ripe. You will notice they'll go from a nice dark green to like a lighter green to almost a yellow. That's when they're kind of getting a little overripe. Now you can still use them, but once they start to go all yellow, they're going to fall off the tree and the skins are going to start to actually sink in and rot. That fruit's rotting. So, if you start to see it turning yellow, it's time to get it off the tree. Um, usually the best time to pick one is when it's got just a little bit of give. You don't want it super firm like a rock, but if you can squeeze it, it just has a light give to it. That's usually when it's ready to be picked off the tree. Year-round fruit production. Most cold hardy of all limes. So this guy can set at 30 degrees and, and be okay too for a few hours. Not many, but a few, two to three. And it makes a, a handsome house plant. Uh, out of all the other citrus trees I've got, just the dark green photo leech and the way that it loads up with the wide leaves and stuff over some of the other citrus trees, I really think that it's a striking house plant too compared to some of the other citrus trees. Oranges. Now, this is probably what everybody thinks. When I say about talk about citrus, most people are like, what about oranges? They're hard to grow in pots in the north. Um, oranges are, are very, very temperature sensitive and they like a lot of heat. So that's a problem here in West Virginia. Uh, we don't have enough hot summer days. Now this past summer and the summer past, the last two summers, we've had a lot of 90 degree days, more than average. Uh, if you had an orange in a pot, it was probably loving life uh, the last couple summers. But an average summer where we're not setting in the 90s and the high 80s every day, if it's not over 85 consecutively day after day after day for a few weeks, Oranges have a hard time setting fruit. They love that hot, humid weather to really set the fruit. So that's where the problem is. You can grow an orange tree great in West Virginia, but it may not load up with a lot of fruit or none at all, depending on temperature. You didn't meet those requirements. But don't worry, there's some things that you can do to help out. There's some varieties you can buy. Now these trees will grow six to 10 feet tall. So these guys get large. So a dwarf variety is considered 10 foot in, in the citrus world of oranges. Um, up to six feet minimum. But there are a couple oranges on the market that are in that three to four foot range now that will load up and give you a decent sized orange. Um, oranges need lots of heat, like I said, to set those fruits. Uh, Trovita is probably the best variety to grow in a pot in West Virginia and doesn't need as much heat to set the fruit like other oranges do. So that would be the one that I would recommend you guys grow. But if you're wanting my personal opinion here, if you're an orange fan and you just absolutely love oranges, then I'm telling you give it a shot. But if you just want to grow some citrus and you like citrus flavor, I would probably sidestep the oranges and go more for that mandarin, tangerine, clementine and grow in pots here in West Virginia. It's just going to be easier to grow. You're going to get fruit, a lot of fruit production out of it versus this orange tree that you may grow for two to three years and it gets six foot tall, it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, and you may only get a handful of oranges off of it a year. So, you know, if one or two oranges is all you're after, then great. But if you're trying to really, you know, show off and say, hey, look, I picked a whole bowl of oranges off my orange tree, probably not going to get there with just one orange tree in a pot in West Virginia. But you can grow them if you're a specimen grower. Now, citrus tree care. This is where we get into very important growing techniques for citrus trees. All of them require roughly the same type of care. So when I talk about this, where we're covering lemons, limes, oranges, mandarins, and even the kumquats. Um, if you don't follow these rules that I've laid out here to minimum, you're probably not going to be very successful at growing citrus. And that is something that I, that I will tell you too. You've got to be committed to really liking citrus trees and wanting to grow stuff. Citrus is not a beginner plant to grow. This is probably well down the line. I would, I would say that you need to be an accomplished houseplant grower for at least five years before even dipping your toe in the citrus pool. 
So um, keep that in the back of your mind. There's also a little bit of cost associated with keeping citrus. Uh, you need a few things that other plants don't need if you want to keep these trees happy. So for the basics here, the pH range is between 5.5 and 6.5. So that's a, that's a pretty wide range. Most of our potting soils are already falling into that. Um, if you go above that or below that, you're going to get some nutrient lockout issues and your tree is going to suffer some, some nutrient problems. Um, I will tell you right now, if you're in West Virginia American water here in the, in the Charleston area, Canal, Putnam, Boone County areas, uh, I have never seen any water test that I've ever taken from a tap of multiple places in my life any higher than 6.4 here in, in West Virginia. So um, most people don't have to worry about the pH, but if you've got well water or if you're in an area that's got some hard water, you may need to invest in a pH meter and pH your, your water and your fertilizer. Uh, the water may be 6.2, which is perfect, but as soon as you add fertilizers to it, it may drop it down to like a 4. And that's not going to be good for your plant. You need to raise that back up. So having pH up and down liquids and a pH meter is going to help you out a lot when you're watering these guys. So unlike your other house plants, you definitely need to pH your water to keep your tree happy. If not, you can start to get some wonky things going on. You want to repot your citrus tree every two years, three years maximum. Can you pot it every year if you want to? Sure, that's just gonna be a bigger, bigger tree that you've gotta deal with. Um, so I usually have mine on two year rotations. Whenever you buy your tree, if it comes in a root ball that's four inches, then don't put it in a pot any bigger than six inches. Only go up two inches every pot size, every time you repot. So if you're in a six inch pot, it sets in there for two years. The next two years after that, go to an eight, then go to a 10, then go to a 12. That almost gives you a decade. Of, of, of a tree going only up to a 12 inch size pot. When it gets to a 12 inch size pot, that is where I would tell you to leave it forever and just start pruning it and just let it be happy in there. And then every two years, take it out and refresh some of the soil around the root ball the best you can. If you wanna go bigger than a 12 inch pot, you're absolutely more than welcome to. Uh, obviously when you get into 14, 16 and bigger pots, they become extremely heavy and difficult to move around. Plus you're gonna get a lot bigger tree. So uh, just don't buy a four inch root ball and plant it in a 12 inch pot. Just do it every two years and move up. The tree's a lot happier that way. Keep trees outside in the summer months. Absolutely, I take all mine out as soon as the weather's warm and we're not gonna get below freezing anymore and bring them back in during the cold. Now, here's where a lot of people make a mistake. The tree has been sitting outside all summer in full sun or partial sun, used to the temperatures and we usually keep our house cooler in the summertime than what it is outside. Well, the tree's happy with that hot temperature. So what a lot of people do is they wait until first of October, the weatherman says, hey, it's going to frost tonight. Oh, I gotta bring my citrus trees inside. They run outside, grab their citrus tree and bring it back into the house. That shocks the tree like you would not believe. And then over the next few weeks, the tree slowly starts dropping leaves. And that's because the tree's been shocked and it's, it's going into a, uh, a slow death, possibly. Um, so what you need to do is if you have these citrus trees is you need to start at the end of August and you need to say, okay, I know in a few weeks frost is coming and you need to start moving your tree a little bit every day. And see, that's a pain. I know a lot of people are thinking, well, that seems like a lot of work, but citrus trees are a little bit of work. So you want to move your pot closer and closer to the house. That way the sunlight is, is eventually going down little by little on the tree. So after a couple days, you should be up near the, the edge of your house. The eaves should be hanging over. The tree's probably setting in shade. And I know you're thinking, man, I'm gonna have a sunny window in my house that gets a lot more sun than that, that shade does out back. But you guys gotta think, you're going through a small window and the glass is actually knocking some of the sun's rays back and blocking some of the stuff that the tree's getting outside full force. So just slowly introduce your tree inside. Just don't bring it in after it's been setting outside. Slowly move it closer to the front door so it can acclimate to the light change and then slowly move it into your house. And then once you get it in your house, take it to the spot that it's going to set. Okay, you wanna make sure that you get it somewhere in your house that it lights. You don't wanna be moving it from room to room. Citrus trees do not like that. They wanna find one spot. And if you find that one spot that your tree's happy, in your house in the winter time, then that would be my designated spot going forward to the tree, but just slowly introduce it to the indoor and growing environment. So basically you're hardening the tree off in reverse. So if you've ever grown seedlings inside and you slowly harden them off to acclimate them to outside, you're doing the reverse on this. Now in the springtime, when the weather's warm, you can bring the tree straight from outside 
or straight from inside your house outside, that will not hurt it. But in the fall, you need to slowly harden it off to go back inside. Clay pots are best choice for planting citrus in. I'm going to tell you clay pots are the best for planting anything in, but we have went away from that in society, basically because plastic pots are cheaper to buy, they're lighter, they don't break as easy, and they're pretty much available everywhere and clay pots are heavy and they break and they're not as pretty. You can get a lot of pretty designs and collars in, in plastic. But I will tell you that the clay pots keep plant roots a lot healthier than plastic pots or metal containers do. Basically because plastic does not breathe. Clay is made from soil, it's porous. Anybody that's ever watered a clay pot and come back 20 minutes later will actually see the outside of the clay kindly wet looking. That's because it's absorbing the water. Air is getting through that clay. Um, if you've ever went and opened up a, uh, or repotted a plastic plant, or a plant that's been in a plastic pot, you'll see the roots have girdled around the, the pot and it pulls out one massive root ball. That's because once the roots hit the side of the plastic pot, it just starts growing in a circle. In clay pots and fabric pots, when the root tip hits the clay or hits up the side of the fabric, it senses the air movement through that material and automatically will start to grow more root hairs than instead of making a sharp 90 and start to grow in a circle and girdle the tree. The more root hairs you have on your roots, the more food, the more water, more nutrients that your plant can take in. So it gives you a much better uh, environment to grow in for that air movement and those roots. You don't have to worry about root rots as much. And citrus trees guys grow, think Florida, sandy soils. So they don't want to be in really wet uh, soils that, that are, that are uh, anaerobic, that don't have a lot of oxygen in them, and that's how you get the root rot problems. And that's an, another big problem that I see people have. They bring their tree in in the wintertime, they wa over water it too much, the soil doesn't dry out because they're used to the summer heat drying the pots out quicker, and inside the pots dry slower, they over water, they get root rot, tree starts to drop in it. Um, do not use metal containers ever to plant in, uh, unless maybe cactuses, but metal heats up with the sun hitting the sides of it. That heats up your root zone. That will kill your tree too, so definitely stay away from metal. If you do have a decorative metal container that you really like, then figure out a clay pot that will fit down inside that metal container and just use that metal container as a decorative container, but inside's another pot that actually has the uh, plant and the root zone. Use a loose mix to plant your, your tree in. So. You get these citrus trees, regular potting soil is not really going to do you the trick. So you can't go and buy the miracle grow from Lowe's or Home Depot. That's not going to get you there. <clears throat> you need to be looking some type of cactus soil. Uh, that was what I would go with. Um, Promix, if you've got it, uh, availability to Promix. Promix is a lot looser than some of the miracle grow. I know they look the same if you're looking at them from eyeball, but they're not formulation wise. So. I would definitely recommend cactus soil, or if you can find anybody that sells Fox Farm, uh, Green Speed and Seed does here in Charleston area. Uh, they carry Fox Farm products. They have a product called Light Warrior. Light Warrior is their seed germination mix that you use to start seedlings in. That is a fantastic mix for citrus to go in. Highly, highly recommend that if you can get your hands on it or even order it offline. And make sure your soil has no added fertilizers at all. I'm going to repeat that. Make sure the potting soil you're buying has no added fertilizers. So what would that be? Any, any miracle Grow product, any miracle Grow product you buy that's got bag soil has fertilizer inside of it. You do not want that. A lot of the Schultz product, uh, Dirt, has um, fertilizer in it. A lot of the Stay Green that you can buy at the big box stores has fertilizer in it. Matter of fact, Home Depot and Lowe's sells zero potting soil right now, zero potting soil, and have for the last several seasons that does, does not have added fertilizers to it. I am not happy about that at all. So you really are going to have to look at your independent garden stores, your grits, places like that, greens, feed and seed, the feed stores in your area that probably find a good quality potting soil or seed germination and or cactus mix that does not have added fertilizer. Citrus trees do not use the same type of fertilizers that other plants use. We'll talk about that in a minute. So you're only going to hurt yourself if you use those bag mixes. Um, don't use hard water on your tree. Use distilled water or rainwater. I bet you're thinking, man, I'm never going to grow a citrus tree. I told you guys it's a little rough. I buy distilled water in jugs from the grocery store on a weekly basis for my citrus trees. Now, why can you not use tap water? It's not that you can't use tap water but you don't know what's in your tap water. Water changes. And if anybody, you know anybody that works in a water plant, they will tell you that. Water changes, as temperature changes outside, the water temperature changes, the biological activity in that water changes. Also, depending on where that water source is coming from. 
citrus trees are very, very finicky to trace elements in the local water supply. Now down in Florida, they water from an aquifer underneath the ground. So they're pulling up rainwater. It also rains constantly in Florida. So these trees are constantly getting a natural water supply. They're not using city water anywhere on these trees. Even in greenhouses and conservatories I've been in, and I've talked to the head growers there, they usually will collect cistern. They got rainwater they collect you, or they use some type of uh, uh, process to get the chlorine and, and, and uh, minerals out of the water. So they scrub it and they clean it. But it's very important for a lot of tropical plants. They just cannot take chlorinated water with, with heavy metals in it. And we have a lot of that in West Virginia. So collect the rainwater off your gutter or buy a jug of distilled water. It's the best way to go. Now, if your tree is, is dying and needs a drink and you don't have anything, then by all means use tap water. Just don't make it a habit. Don't water your tree constantly with tap water is all I'm saying. Every once in a while it will not hurt anything. Likes 50% humidity. So think about how warm and humid Florida is. So a problem in West Virginia is we put our trees in our house in the wintertime and whenever you go across the room and you get shocked when you touch the light switch or our ladies, you guys, you get in your dry skin, you start getting the lotion out and you're putting the lotion on because of that winter, that dry air. Think about your citrus tree. It's used to being from a tropical area where it sets in 50% humidity. So how do I raise the humidity? There's several things you can do. You can either set your pot on a tray of water. Uh, or in a tray that's got pebbles and water in it to keep it around. I don't like that method because you always get algae on the gravel and you're constantly having to scrub and clean that in the sink and the colander. So what I do is I just keep distilled water in a spray bottle and at least once a day I go through and I spritz all my citrus trees up the lowers and the, and the tops of the leaves. And sometimes if I'm, I'm really diligent, I'll do it twice a day. You can even get by doing it three times a day. I wouldn't do it more than that, but that'll keep the humidity high enough during those dry winter months to keep your tree happy inside. Um, citrus trees love nitrogen. They constantly grow. Citrus trees, like I said, guys, just constantly grow. They're always growing. If you're meeting their growing requirements and you're keeping them happy, you will know that by, by new growth and a lot of fruit set. Um, like most plants, they love nitrogen. So feed once a month, April through November, or every month if under a grow light. So we're gonna talk about that. So if you move your tree outside in April and the spring, you need to be fertilizing it every couple weeks or at least once a month, depending. I do once a month, some people like to do twice a month. That, that is personal preference. Um, I kind of look at my tree and engage when it needs to be fed because it kind of lets me know I'm, I'm experienced enough to see some telltale signs of some things. Um, but if you're growing your tree under a grow light inside your house, then it's summertime all the time. So you just, every month, you need to be feeding your tree. Dynagrow 795 is a very, very good all-around fertilizer. I like Dynagrow because it can do two things for you and save you some money. One, you can use Dynagrow 795 for all of your house plants. I haven't grown anything tropical or even that's not tropical that doesn't like Dynagrow 795. It's a fantastic formulation. So you can use that on citrus and other house plants. So that's about the only one that I have that'll cross over. So if you're only looking for one fertilizer for everything, Dynagrow 795. Green Steed and Seed here in the Charleston area does carry uh, that. So you can find it there. Dr. Earth Citrus Avocado and Fruit Tree Fertilizer. Now I've used this, this is a granular fertilizer. This is an organic option if you wanna do all organic production. The only thing is, is uh, you have to follow the back. They've got some, some feeding schedules in there. I'm not a big fan of the organics with my potted plants because I have a dog. And I've never met one dog in my life that won't go crazy over smelly organic fertilizers. So if your dog is, is prone to digging in your flower beds or likes to root around in your flower pots in your house, put, the, put that organic fertilizer and it's gonna drive them crazy and there's gonna be dirt all over your floor and your tree's probably gonna be in there. So be careful about that. There's also the Alaskan fish emulsion. If you do want to go organic and you got pets and you're worried about the dog or the cat messing with the soil, then the Alaskan fish emulsion is probably the way to go. It's, it's a liquid fish poo. You mix it with water, it's diluted, you water it in like you would anything else. It does have a very fishy smell for about four hours. So whatever room your tree's in is going to smell like fish. So I know that's very unpleasant. So a lot of times I will wait for a warm day in the winter and water it outside and let it set outside in 40 degree temperature and let it kind of you know, air out. Or worst case scenario, on a cold day, put it in the spare better bathroom and turn the vent fan on, water it, shut the door and just let it sit in there with the vent fan running for two or three hours and tell anybody that opens up the door they're gonna have a fishy experience. Um, <clears throat> you will need to add chelated iron to any fertilizer 
speed. So you'll need to buy you some chelated iron. It comes in a liquid form. You can buy it pretty much any place. I think Walmart even has it in the springtime. They might not right now. I know that Lowe's and Home Depot should have it in their garden center right now. But follow the directions on the bottle. Um, every time I've, I've bought two or three different types, it's you know usually a quarter of a teaspoon or half a teaspoon to a gallon of water, depending on the manufacturer. But you definitely need to be putting down some chelated iron about every six weeks with your trees. They, 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 they need a lot of iron to stay this nice, big, bright green color. So if you're noticing that your, your tree overall is starting to go to a lighter green than normal, not that dark green, it's probably a good indication that there's an iron deficiency and you need to add some iron. So what I would do is I would fertilize once a month, your watering maybe every day, every other day, depending on, on uh, if you're outside or inside. We'll talk about watering schedules here in a minute, but just about every six weeks with one of those waterings, put in that chelated iron, that'll help that tree. You can also give it when you fertilize too, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, I usually like to fertilize and then the following watering, I'll put the chelated iron in, but I have done it at the same time too. Citrus trees need at least eight hours of full sun or full light each day in order to be happy and to grow and, and to stay alive. So here's what I will tell you. If you have a south or southeast window, and you've been growing citrus and you put your citrus tree up near the window and it doesn't drop an abundance of leaves and it keeps most of its leaves 50 percent or more of its leaves stay on it throughout the winter time and you're happy with that and then you drag it out in the spring and then it regenerates leaves and starts to set fruit then i'm happy with you for being happy with that uh, me personally i like to keep mine going all year round in production so i will throw a grow light over top of my citrus tree now if you're like most of us who have windows that are up high off the floor, maybe you don't have a true south southeast facing window, maybe you live in town and there's houses or obstructions, trees, telephone poles that block true sunlight from coming in, then you're probably going to have to supplement with a uh, grow light. Um, and that's, that's basically my house. Um, I have that issue. So um, as long as they're getting eight hours of light, they'll be happy. If you want them to set fruit, in your house in the winter time put a nice grow light over top of them you can either use led or t5 lights uh, there's a whole option of lights out there now when it comes to that um, i have got a couple of nice led lights if you're looking at the slide right now in the citrus tree care you'll see a couple of other small citrus trees on a wire rack that's actually in my dining room and you will actually see that purple what we call the purple led lights it gives you that that purple kind of glow um, those are the first generation grow lights. They, they do great. We're not using purple lights much in commercial. Everything is more of a white light now. So that purple, when I see purple lights, that's an indication of old technology, which is why those LED lights are so much cheaper now on Amazon. But you can pick up one of those purple lights for 50, 60 bucks off Amazon, and that thing will last you 20 years of wintertime growing and put it on a light timer, get a light timer, use the one you got for the Christmas tree, however you want to do it. But you can get a five, ten dollar light timer and set this guy to come on about eight o'clock in the morning and kick back off about six o'clock in the evening. If you do that through from the time that we change our time all the way up until the weather gets warm again in April to move your tree outside, you'll have a very happy tree. It'll continue to grow just like it's summertime and you'll need to fertilize throughout the winter inside your house. But they need at least eight hours of light to be happy. So, uh, you want to prune your tree to keep it manageable. You can do that different ways. You can either pinch the tips they're, they're, when they're real green and soft. Um, I don't really recommend that. I don't like the, the, the ripped edge. I, I think that it could cause a little bit more uh, uh, insect and disease pressure. So I always just get me a nice pair of scissors or pruning shears and Felcos and go in and prune up the tree. And basically you can shape them about however you want. And if you mess up, very forgiving because these guys grow so quick, it'll just grow right back out. Um, always remove dead or sick looking fold leaves. So when I come over to prune my tree, I'll kind of look inside to see if there's anything dead or dying. Always cut that stuff out. The fruit will set on the lower limbs, so don't cut them off. And citrus trees are kind of odd like that. Uh, these lower limbs actually will continue to set fruit. What I like to do is cut my older limbs back by about a third after they've already set fruit and I picked it, and then they'll regenerate new growing tip and keep on setting new buds and, and growing. So you can have a tree stay the same size forever and just keep pruning it as it grows. It'll just keep growing and setting new fruit, and that's what makes them so great to keep in a pot. Um, Make sure you harvest your fruits when they're full in collar and soft to the touch. When I mean soft by the touch is they've got a kindly slight give to them. 
Um, fruits will not ripen after being picked. So unlike tomatoes or some other vegetables and fruits that you're used to, once you pick this off the tree, it's not going to get any riper. It's not going to get any sweeter or any sour, however you want to look at that, okay? So make sure that your what you're picking is ready to go. Uh, trees are self-pollinating, but have two of each variety will help. And that is true, guys. These trees are self-pollinating, so you don't need to have two trees to get a lot of fruit set. If you do have two of the same varieties in any citrus tree, you'll get a little bit more fruit production. But remember earlier, I was telling you guys about spraying these trees with, with distilled water inside the house in the wintertime to keep the humidity up. Well, not only are you keeping the humidity up, but you're doing two other things too. Spider mites hate moisture. So that's why spider mites are always such a problem on our house plants in the wintertime because they're inside our house. It's warm and dry with that forced, forced air furnace. And most of the plants are very dry, no humidity, and that's when they will explode. And usually you don't know you've got a spider mite problem until it's too late. So keep the spider mites at bay. You don't have to use any chemicals or nothing. Just spray these trees daily with, with distilled water or rainwater, and that will keep the spider mites away. That's also going to keep the humidity up. And best of all, as this thing blooms and the blooms are open and you see the blooms, get in there and spray them real good because that water actually will help move that pollen and pollinate that tree a little bit just by spraying that water in there, just like corn gets pollinated by the rain too. So uh, that's, that's one way that you can do that. Another thing is you can come up every day and kindly brush the, the limbs a little bit, the leaves, and that'll knock pollen in there. But you gotta be careful. I don't know if you guys can see it, but all citrus tree grows some pretty gnarly spikes. I mean, that thing would mess you up. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, a very, it's, a, it's as dense as a toothpick and very, very sharp. All citrus trees have these. You can cut these out if you want to and make it a little bit easier. But um, if you've got dogs, cats, or small children, this is a good way to deter them from messing with your fruit. But uh, that thing gets pretty nasty and you can see them all setting in here and even up the sides of the trunk, even littler ones right here. So you wanna be very careful with those guys, very sharp. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this particular citrus tree here is actually a blood orange. Uh, this is my only orange that I have in my collection. Why did I go with the blood orange? Two reasons. One, this was a gift to me, and I didn't have an orange. And number two, the blood orange is a smaller orange, about the size of a tangerine, which makes it great for, for pot production. And this guy will get about four feet tall. However, it takes about three years for this thing to set fruit in the pot. And what you're looking at right here was bought at six months old, and we're already about a year maybe 14 months. So this thing's about two years old already and we still have no fruit set. But I anticipate maybe later this winter under my grow lights on some of this new growth that we, I may see my first buds there. Um, I'll keep you guys posted on that as we do more of these talks. So citrus tree resources, where can you get resources for these? There's the Lazy Gardener's Guide to Growing Citrus in Containers by Trey Watson. That is probably, if you have never grown citrus and you're wanting to get into it, buy that book. Read that book before we buy any trees, okay? That, that should be what should be on your Christmas list this year. Um, but that one's a great one, and that, that'll teach you a lot of nice things. There's also growing, growing tasty tropical plants. Um, that book right there has actually been written by the two owners of Logies.com, which is the next thing below that. Logies is L-O-G-E-E apostrophe -E -E S.com, Logies.com. They have some of the best citrus trees that you can buy on the market with lots of other beautiful house plants. So if you're not familiar with Logies, I've probably made somebody's day because your pocketbook is liable to get a lot littler after going on that website because there's lots of beautiful things that they sell. Um, but anyways, the owners of Logies actually wrote the book Growing Tropical or Tasty Tropical Plants basically because they sell so many tropical fruit plants that they just made a book because there wasn't a lot of resources out there at the time. There's more now, but still it's hard to find. And there's also Four Winds Growers, Four Winds Growers, uh, .com, all, all lowercase words. Uh, that is an, a nursery online too that sells a lots of citrus trees and they are fantastic at shipping. Now, everybody thinks that um, poinsettias and stuff are, are Christmas time. I beg to differ. I think citrus is very Christmassy, basically because a lot of citrus, a lot of oranges are being harvested right now. This is when they're getting harvested in Florida right at the holiday season. So these make a great gift to give to a gardener or houseplant fanatic that you've got in your family. 
Um, most of these uh, places will ship these trees uh, as long as the weather is not too frightful. So right now on the East Coast, I don't see anything in the next two weeks that really puts us down below freezing in the daytime. I know there's some nights that are coming up and that's okay in shipping. But they won't ship these trees when it gets really, really cold. The point that I'm making is, is you can usually get these trees right up through Christmas shipped to your house. So if you still want one for yourself or for a present, a uh, Christmas gift or something like that for somebody, order it today or here in the next week or two and they'll ship it out to you. Usually when we get to Christmas and after, they, they stop shipping until mid-March. So that's usually how that kindly works. So a um, couple things that I'll cover before we end the, the conversation here, uh, just to reiterate, is make sure that when you move your citrus tree from inside or from outside inside your house in the fall that you do it slowly. You move that tree slowly across the porch or across the driveway deck or whatever and slowly introduce it to that light change. Make sure that you find a place in your house that's a south-southeast window that's at least getting eight hours of direct sunlight. If you do not have that type of setting, then I very, very, uh, or I highly, highly recommend that you guys look at getting a LED or T5 type of grow light. Um, if anybody has any questions about those grow lights, then you can reach out to us and I can kindly help you on the side with some of that stuff. But uh, Amazon's got so many of them. Um, what I would tell you to do is to read reviews and make sure that you're getting something that's quality and uh, get a light timer and at least plug that light timer and let that light run from about eight o'clock in the morning till about 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the evening, seven days a week. Uh, and you wanna leave the light hanging about six to eight inches off the top of your tree. So right here's where the light should be. So you're really flooding that canopy with a lot of light. LEDs aren't gonna burn the plant. Uh, T5s really aren't going to burn the plant, keep them about the same height that you go with a T5 type of light. Um, make sure that you spritz the tree every day with distilled water or rainwater to keep the spider mites at bay, to keep the humidity up, and also to help with pollination. And if you're growing under a grow light inside, make sure that you're fertilizing that tree at least once a month with, with some type of fertilizer. And what I like to use, guys, is Jack's fertilizer right here. Anybody that's familiar with Jack's brand? Uh, it used to be J.R. Peters back in the day, and now it's, uh, it's actually Jack's. J.R. Peters still is there, but Jack's is the parent owner. This right here is Citrus Feed 201020. So if you notice, again, the high end, that first nitrogen, 20%, pretty high mix. Um, this is water-soluble fertilizer, so it's a chemical fertilizer. Um, I, I don't... I try to grow as organically as possible with everything, guys, but when it comes to fertilizers, certain plants respond better to certain fertilizers over other ones. I used to grow all my citrus exclusively with, with fish emulsion and put up with the smell, and I actually got a free sample of this from a fertilizer company, and they said, give it a shot, so I compared it with one citrus tree to the other ones, and I've seen a, a quite a bit noticeable difference in the overall color and vigor of my tree using the chemical fertilizer, so I slowly switched over and I used that but I only use it at half rate. So I think it's a tablespoon per gallon, so I always use a half a tablespoon once a month. Same thing with a little bit of chelated iron and um, water, fertilizing water in my tree. Now, for watering, that's the last thing I wanna talk about. If it's outside on your deck, more than likely you're gonna to have to water it every single day, if not every other day. I highly, highly doubt you're gonna go three days outside without having to water your tree. These guys use a lot of water, but they don't like to set in a lot of water. So that's why you need that looser mix. Remember, think of Florida, sand soil. Rain just goes right through it. We got heavy clay here in West Virginia. So the trees need a lot of water, but they don't wanna have their roots set in a lot. So you need a fast draining soil which means the pot and the soil dries out a lot faster than other potting mixes. So outside, every day, every other day. Now, once you bring it inside, I, it's gonna be hard for me to tell you that because everybody house is different. We all heat our houses with different heating sources and where you place your tree is all going to, if you're running ceiling fan, I mean, I don't know, there's a lot of different ways. So what I would always tell everybody, bare minimum, you're gonna have to at least water three times a week in your house, but maybe more, maybe only twice. But do the knuckle test. Go up to the first line of your knuckle, stick your finger in the top, in the top line of the soil, up to the first part of your knuckle. If it comes out like this one right here, you see how there's very little dirt on my finger. That pot's dry. This pot right here is ready to be watered. I already knew that. I brought it to work with me this morning unwatered, so I didn't have a heavy wet pot to deal with. So when I go home at night, I'll, I'll rewater this. But none of that soil stuck to my finger. If I would have put my finger to the first knuckle and brought it back up, you're going to feel the moisture, you're going to see the mud, the dirt on your finger, then that tree does not need water. That's the best way to learn how to water these guys instead of trying to figure it out. 
uh, by just looking at the tree. As you get more experience, you'll be able to look at the tree and say, okay, the leaves are starting to curl a little bit. I know I need water. Uh, but starting out, just use your finger and you're not going to go that route. Water until a little bit of water pours out of the bottom of the pot and then stop. And never, never let your tree set in the tray with water because that causes root rot problems. Now this guy needs to be repotted. I told you it's about two years old. If you look at the bottom, you can actually see the roots coming out. So this guy needs to be repotted soon. But if I was to let this fill up with water and walk away and come back several hours, all those roots are setting in that water. They're not getting oxygen, and that's what causes a root rot problem. So make sure that all your excess water you dump out or you water these guys in a bathtub or something like that where they can drain out. Obviously outside on your porch, you can just let the water drain out and run wherever. But, excuse me, inside the house, a little bit harder. So just never let the roots set in water. Brad, do we have any comments or questions from anybody? Nope. Okay. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed our little citrus talk. And if you do have a question later that pops in your head or you're busy right now, feel free to reach us on our Facebook there, Patriot Gardens. Um, also, too, if you have the presentation, you have Melissa Stewart, Brad Cochran, Chris, me, all of our email addresses there. Feel free to email us with a question, and we'll be sure to answer. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Oh, hold on, we do have one more question. Oh, we do have a question. Uh, Sherry Schaefer, leaf drop is in full force. Is it too late to turn it around? No, no. I'm sure it is in full force. I'm sure uh, I'm sure we've probably moved that tree inside uh, since it's getting colder, and that's probably when the leaf drop has started. Um, if the tree has fully dropped its leaves, you know, we're, we're, we're in a critical area, but we can still bring it back. Uh, sounds like to me we probably need to get some, some secondary lighting on your tree. It sounds like to me we've got a, a light issue. If the leaves have dropped off really sudden, after bringing it inside, that's a very, very strong indication that it's a light, light issue. So you need some type of, of grow light over top of that. The other thing to check is make sure your soil's not too wet. If your soil's overly wet, that could cause some leaf drop. However, if all the leaves are dropping off and you've still been watering, you could have a twofold issue because the tree's in, in a uh, suffering mode right now, losing its leaves, so therefore it's not going to use water. And you keep adding water to the root ball, root ball doesn't dry out we actually cause a secondary root rot issue on top of the light issue so uh, let's let's probably uh, check the root ball make sure it's not overly wet if it is overly wet let it dry out before you, you rewater again using the knuckle test um, if everything seems to be okay in the root zone and you can even pull your plant out of the pot and kind of look at the roots if they're white nice and white looking they're good if they're brown black you kind of know you've got some rot issues uh, but more than likely being in the middle of November, we've brought these trees back inside. I'm, I'm pretty positive you probably got a, light, a lighting issue. You probably need a secondary light. So here's where an LED or T5 light would be fantastic to hang over top of your citrus tree. Um, one last thing I'll add to, I know a lot of people like to buy fruit from the store and grow fruit from seeds. If you grow an orange or a lemon or lime from a store-bought tree, there's a good chance you probably will not get any fruit or it will take forever to get fruit because a lot of those are still standard size trees, trees, not dwarf trees that are on these dwarf root stocks, which makes them fruit earlier. So uh, a lot of times the ones you grow in the store have to get six, seven foot tall before they'll start to set fruit, unlike these little dwarf varieties. So make sure that if you're going to buy a citrus tree that you buy it from a uh, wholesale or online uh, nursery and you know exactly what variety you're getting, not, not a lime that you bought at Foodland and planted a couple of seeds. Any other questions there? Nope. Okay. We're good. All right, guys. Well, thank you and we will see you next time. Okay.